Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're working on our irrigation system, primarily in the flower beds. We're gonna be making some repairs. We're also swapping out our hunter nodes, which Aaron will hopefully explain for us here in a second. But we're doing this as a family today. Benjamin's out here with his pump sprayer and his lawnmower, giving us a hand. Are you washing your lawnmower? Did it need a good washing? Good job. So this is what we're doing first. These are the new Hunter Node BTs that we're swapping all of our old ones out for. And the reason we're swapping them out is because the old ones suck. They don't suck. They worked for us for two years, but you can't control them with your phone. And what these do, so I guess we should explain what they do first. So I feel like we should go to an, where we have one of these already installed so I can show it. Okay, okay so I kind of want to set the stage for who would want one of these because if you're putting in a new system, I don't think that you would want to buy one of these. This is more for people who... Like afterthought. Yeah, it's like an afterthought. <laughs> or after It's the like fact. if your house is built and you're trying to figure out what to do after. So here's how we're using them. So here's a situation where we have a faucet right here. Let me back up. So we have active water here, but we don't have power. And let's say, well, here's an ex example. We want to water all this stuff, right? So we need drip zones here. We want to have drip zones all around. But how do you do that if there aren't already drip zones. Other so, than trenching. Other than trenching. But we do have water, right? So since the water's coming here, what we did is we split off the water. So there's just a T, you can't see it, but oh, there's so the a- the T is here. It's just down there. Down there yeah. somewhere, okay. So this is just a shut off valve. So if I wanna turn the water off, uh, I'd go this way. So that just turns it on and off. And then here's a filter. And then in this box, I've already set up one of these controllers. So that's a new one. Yeah, this is a new one. I've already swapped it out. That looks complicated. So look down in here, you can see that there are four zones. There's uh, four valves down here. And all this does is it's a battery operated irrigation timer. And you can set it to turn these zones on whenever you want. So these are all drip zones. And there's no screen on this one because it's Bluetooth. And that is why we're swapping them out because I can control them with my phone as opposed to needing to get into the box to change every single time you want to change the settings or change any of the times. So in the spring when we get rain, maybe I'll want to skip for two or three days and I would have to come out here and program the thing to skip for a certain number of days and it was a huge hassle. But with these I can change it from my phone and I don't need to come out here and open the box. So basically anywhere that you've got live water going to a hose faucet, you can interrupt that line and put a T in so that you still have live water, but it's also feeding these zones um, that will then go, you know, you can connect, connect them to wherever you need them to be. Right? Yeah. The thing that might be confusing is you're looking at this and you're wondering like, well, where do they go? Right? So if you look down in here, there's four lines, one that goes this way, this way, see oh, one, two, three, four. Way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they pop up right underneath the ground right here and convert to drip tubing like this. Mm -hmm. So one of them goes across. We, we went underneath the sidewalk back when this was more tore up. We area. fed that area. That's one zone. And then this is the next zone. Um, so we just tied into a drip tubing here. And then the next zone, Does like there's this, a black right? line that goes over here and feeds underneath the trees. And then the last zone is the kitchen bed that feeds over there. So there's four zones that are fed off of this one unit um, and that's how we water it. So I actually have this hooked up to my phone. You want me to turn it on? Yeah. Show you how it works? I hope we haven't just created more confusion. <laughs> this is why Aaron tackles this sort of thing because he has the patience for it. And I would just be out here with uh, a hose. And that's the thing with the other nodes, the old nodes, because it was such a pain to um, come out here and program them because it wasn't intuitive. It was incredibly hard to program. If I had a flower bed that like I had just newly planted something that needed a little extra water, I would opt for just uh, dragging the hose out. Um, even though we had a drip system set up, I would just constantly be dragging the hose out to different plants instead of turning on the zone because it wasn't easy. So we just needed to figure out a way. And I mean, we didn't really have a way until they came out with this new one. So that's why we're swapping them all over. We are selling the old ones on eBay, <laughs> so you know. <laughs> Sucker wants them. Yeah. So this is what the app looks like. You can see at the top it says GA3. I've got a bunch of them named and then fireplace because it's near our fireplace. And you can take photos of each zone. So this one I titled Maple Tree. So we'll click on that. And let's say we want to run it for one minute. Right? Mm -hmm. We'll hit run. Oh, 
Oh, I just heard it click on. I never thought I'd ever be as excited about drip ever in my life as I am now. That beeping seems to have gotten louder and then we have an airplane. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna turn it off. Okay. Airplane, airplane yeah. He says airplane with an H, <laughs> airplane. Oh, mama needs to replace that shrub, huh? The other thing that made the older hunter nodes hard to work with, aside from physically having to come and open the box and change it, is that the operating system, and I mentioned this in a video before, is not intuitive. The way that you program it, it makes no sense. And I, I it just makes no sense. In fact, the irrigation guys that we have, um, that we work with all the time, they won't even mess with it. So like, they'll tell me like, we'll install it for you, but it's so difficult, we won't even program it for you. So if that tells you anything about how difficult Aaron, it is to use. you're discouraging our eBay sales. <laughs> well, they work, they, they work. They and if you, for two years for us. Yeah, if you're easily. willing to, you know, and they're cheaper than the Bluetooth version. So if you're wanting to save some money and you know, that's fine, but but we need to save some time because it could be a five to 10 minute process for every single box. Yeah, every if time you, you had just like something. one node, it wouldn't be a big deal. Yeah. But it, when you have a ton, it just gets harder. You really need to be able yeah. to change things quickly. So anyway, that's why we install them. Um, if you were gonna be installing a system from scratch, this is probably a terrible idea to install one of these. You would wanna have like a box that, you know, you install on the side of your home and you'd wanna run, run all your irrigation from one location um, and not like this, where we have irrigation running from multiple locations. And always but, run extra. Yeah, always the only reason extra. we're doing it this way is just because our garden was established when we moved in. Mm -hmm. So you just have to work with what you have and we didn't want to trench all over the place. Doing this was really the only way without trenching that we could separate all of the flower bed watering from the grass watering. So we still have like 16 grass watering zones and we have 28 uh, drip flower bed zones now because of the hunter nodes. It was the only way we could do it. And we have to in our area because our hard water is horrible and grass and flower beds need to be watered differently. Okay, so now that we've probably talked for I don't know how long, and I hope that it, it's clear what it is that we're doing, we're gonna go around to each one of our irrigation boxes. Aaron's already swapped over two or three at this point. So we'll show you how he swaps them out. And then I am going to, while he's turning on and off the zones, I've got all of my supplies. Let me go back to the gator quick. I'll show them to you. I'm gonna be making repairs to the drip line because every year it's inevitable. Like we nick stuff with shovels or they get chewed during the winter time by squirrels. So I'll be making any necessary repairs. Okay, so I've got extra tubing. I've got extra just solid black poly and then I've got some of the extra drip tubing. I've got my Felcos here, my gloves, and then I've got an irrigation box that's full of all the stuff that I will probably need. I'm guessing I'm gonna use mostly these today, so I put a bunch of extra ones in there. Um, but it's really handy if you've got a drip system to have something like this. Erin also organized this. You're so good at organizing, Erin. You keep my life straight. Anyway, uh, it's just super handy because I was able to go in and grab what I needed really quickly. That way it doesn't become a huge chore or job. So let's do this. Thing. Now we got to do it. <laughs> I think is that pink or red, baby? Pink. Okay. Well, it could be a light red, I suppose. It matches your red sweater, babe. So we're going to go to the couple of areas Aaron has already installed the new nodes and we're going to turn on all the zones and look for anything that needs to be repaired first and then we'll move on to installing the nodes. Would you mind turning that zone one back on? Sure. I'll take a look over here. Okay, I hear the water is on. So what I do basically is just take a scan of the area. I just planted some white bleeding hearts in here. Aren't those pretty? They're little, but they're going to be beautiful. Oh, look at that. All right, this is about irrigation. Everything looks to be operating in this area. I don't see anything spraying or gushing out anywhere. We are going to be doing a video of this area. Remember we talked about pulling all the drip up in this area? Yeah, do you think it's still a good idea? I, yeah, I think it's a great idea because in this spot right here, we haven't done the grid system. This is when I was still doing like the willy nilly drip tubing. You can see it like, woo, it just kind of willy nilly is all around the place. So we'll do a video where we pull up all the drip and replace it over here. I had extra water, yep, running. What's supposed to be running to my hydrangea here, which didn't fare very well on the top this year. These are the ahas. I've seen some new growth down there though. Oh, watch out, baby. Be careful with the plants, okay? All right, ready for the next zone. Okay, I can hear it's on. I think this one might be good. I there fixed, was, I already did you? fixed it. Okay. Yeah, because that one was clear as day. This one right here I had to come fix because, well, it was like somewhere, oh, right here. 
it had just like come apart and it was just gushing out. You can see it like made a divot right there. Everything else looks to be in order. All right, next. Okay, so let's do underneath the pines and the roses. Oh, we need to mulch, Aaron. I think everything is working in this spot too. Aaron, you were saying that you have to be within a certain foot range. Yeah, you though, do right? have to be within 50 feet of okay. these since there's Bluetooth. So much better though. Like that's easy. Oh yeah. And, and to me, it was the fact that the controller was so hard to program mm -hmm. or change that it was just a nightmare. Also, there was no way with the old one, there was no way to run an extra schedule. So let's say for math, you have all four zones running for one hour each, right? Let's say it's like, well, it's really hot. I want to run all of them one extra time. You can't run the whole system, like all four zones at one time. You'd have to go and turn one zone on, wait for it to run, go turn the next one on. So now you can bad. turn it on and they'll all just you run can, consecutively. You can do anything you want on your phone. Just nice. set it however you want. Okay, so this was a mistake. Um, <laughs> you think? Look, yeah. Look at all those boxes. Yeah. So what the, happened? the guys, the irrigation guys didn't have big enough boxes. And, you know, we were new to the whole process. So you can fit everything into a single box. Instead of four. Instead of four. We have two, two controllers uh, in this section. So four boxes. So anyway, maybe one year we'll dig it all up and, and it, put everything into one giant box. But Benjamin likes it. So that's a win. Is that, your, is that your house? Yeah, you can get in there. You want me to come in there with you? It's the best looking grass we have on our place. It's nice and soft, huh? Should we grow some beans on this this year, buddy? That's old one. And now we just hook up all the wires. <laughs> Easy peasy. It looks like there's two wires coming from each zone. Yeah, so it's really pretty simple. There's a black wire and a red wire, and the black wires all go together in one, and you just use a, I don't know what these are called. I'm not an electrician. Yeah, little no. There's a, there's a common name no, for it, and I don't know what it is. <laughs> uh, and then all of these just tie into the corresponding, they're all numbered, so you just, uh, there's like one, two, three, four, and the yellow one, the yellow one and the gray are some type of like temperature sensor or um, moisture sensor. Mm -hmm. And we're not using those. So we just hook up all the red wires with the corresponding red wire. Okay, and then really all the black simple. ones go together. And all the black ones go together. Gotcha. Yeah. That's it. So now basically you turn it on and figure out which one corresponds with what and take pictures? Yep. Okay, cool. What did that take? Like less than 10 minutes? Yeah. What's that little plastic piece out there? Um, it's a little piece, like a hanger. You can put it on the solenoid and oh. it'll sit there. Sure. It's kind of, once it, it's all waterproof. So once it's in there, it like doesn't Like those really are matter. submersible, the new ones are, right? Uh, the old ones are too. Are they? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, my weeping cherry tree is blooming. <gasps> look, buddy. Yeah, look at that beautiful tree. <gasps> oh, it's beautiful, huh? Yeah, and there's honeybees all over it. Whoa, that's so pretty. Hey, chickens. I hear this one on over here. Found my first break. Yes, it's my time to shine, Aaron. All right, so sometimes, depending on the size of the cut, we might have enough play to not have to add any extra tubing in. So I just have a straight coupler there. Yep, I had enough play. Sometimes if the cut is like way too long, like diagonally cut, you have to add in two straight couplers and then a new piece of tubing in between. But that's plenty, that should work. So do you wanna turn it back on? Yeah. The water's coming out properly out of the right holes here. Oh, wait, wait a minute. That's not proper. Nope, nope. Ah! All right, so I think what happened was because I fixed this one, it created enough pressure to unearth this little nick right here. So what I think I'm going to actually have to do, because this is a T-connector, I'm going to cut the tube off here, put a straight coupler in, and then put a new piece of tubing between the two. Well, the camera shut off kind of midway through my repair. So let me just show you what it looks like. So I cut that piece of tubing off. It's right here. 
that's where the cut was. Um, I put a new piece of tubing on this connector and then just connected these two together with a straight coupler. Easy peasy. So there's the water's back on, everything looks good here, but there is a quarter inch tube that's just, so the emitter just blew. I'm like we can water some plants. So I had a container sitting right here last year, so I ran some drip to it, but I doubt I will put a container over here this year. So I'm just gonna cut this off and plug it. And that'll take care of that. So we're back behind the chicken coop. We realized when we were testing this zone over here that all of this was running right here and it runs to the end of the coop, but none of this is going right here. And it all got kind of messed up when the elm tree was removed um, because you know there was lines that broke and then reconnected and I think something got connected oddly. I'm not real sure. This whole area <laughs> is gonna change anyway. All these pavers are going. We're having these uh, edged in brick here very soon and we're going to move this Japanese maple, plant the tree in here, but there's just a bunch of random stuff. So I think we're going to take this quarter inch drip tube, which I just ran last year because I planted some extra annuals in a place that wasn't really getting reached by water. So I'll just plug all of this. And the same thing for this quarter inch too, we'll just cut it off and plug it for now. We can always tap into it later if we need it. So I made the repairs. I just cut that quarter inch off and plugged it. This one I removed entirely. And I didn't really spend a whole lot of time trying to make it look nice, which I usually try to. Um, but this area is gonna change so much with both of these maples. Like this one's going away. This one's gonna be planted right in here. That's why I haven't cleaned and got the fountain running yet because uh, I just don't know if we're gonna have to move it a little bit. And then we really do need to level it up better. Every year it like kind of sinks a little bit more because we didn't put a proper base under it. Um, so anyway, for now it works and this side is receiving water and right now that's what matters. Okay, so Aaron just swapped out to the next node, which was in this box right here, which controls zones over in here. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to walk over here and we'll see what happens. Uh oh, Stop. oh, oh, that's not good. <laughs> that's where it goes. That's an unused zone. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a good example. So you guys, that's what it looks like when it comes up out of the box. So there's one that's been um, attached to drip and then this one clearly hasn't yet. So that cap needs to be on there tighter, but we won't have that zone on, so it shouldn't be a problem. All right, so zone two. Zone two. Oh yeah, I can see a geyser. Excellent. So we've got one other little leak right here. That's a little itty bitty one. Oh look, Aaron, new growth on the boxwoods. Oh good. That is a sight for sore eyes. Oh. Okay, so I gotta get a couple of couplers. Although, I don't know, can, did you turn it off? I can't. Cause I need to see what we got going on here. I gotta dig that up a little bit. I'm hoping it's a, just a drip tube and not an access pipe. Pretty simple, it's just sliced right there. So I just need a coupler, that's it. We'll turn it back on and see if it blows that dirt right off the top. Okay, and then one more repair. All right, fire back up. Hope I just heard the water turn back on. And there's no water leak in there. And, oh, there's another one. So Aaron had to get in here and make this repair because this drip tubing right here is actually really old. We haven't replaced all of it in this flower bed yet. It still works, but it's a smaller diameter and we don't have any of the old couplings. So we have to use the new ones, which are bigger, uh, which I can't get into this tubing. So Aaron has to do it. Anyway, we'll swap this out at some point. Zone three, I see water coming out and no leaks. Oh, that's nice. This whole area is going to change a bit as well. We need to rerun a lot of this because I did this before we started gridding things out too. So it starts at one area and then it loops around this whole area till I get to the center. <laughs> Just bad. Bad for like coverage and flow and all of those sorts of things. But 
for now it is working. Oh, it looks like a, a quarter inch tube just came off its coupler. That's easy, I just need to push it back on. See that right there? That just came off of that. We'll fix that. We are done behind the gazebo, so we are heading to the vegetable garden now. So the node is already hooked up in the vegetable garden. We just have to test out each zone. So the lavender in front of our vegetable garden and like the end caps are all on one system, which we, I mean, the water's all working right now, so that's great. And that's all I'm really concerned about today, but we do need to figure out how to disconnect the two because the lavender wants a very different water than the hydrangea. Hydrangea, especially up here, this is a full sunspot. It needs water every single day, but we water the lavender every three days. So last year, I just remembered, I thought that I didn't give it supplemental water, but I did. I always had a hose out here watering this one. So uh, anyway, we got to get that figured out at some point, but there's no leaks in that zone. So now zone two? Yeah, there's zone two. That one didn't get a plug or got sheared off. So zone two just waters the two pots that are usually here flanking the vegetable garden. Well, it works. Gotta, yeah, I gotta get that one plugged. This is probably this is probably the worst spring ever for breaks in the drip tubing. And I don't know, it's because we had an enormous amount of planting going on in the fall with bulbs and stuff like that and a lot of infrastructure changes, but my goodness. fence line we used to have just one faucet and was about two-thirds of the way down right at one of the fence posts so to clean it up and to have water access on both sides we had a, a faucet put on either end and then um, we had another one of the nodes put in here so this right here is an example of how you can put it all in one box instead of two like we have or four <laughs> like we have in other areas of our yard it's much cleaner um, it, either way it doesn't really matter I'm just thankful that we have the drip zones but um, these three are unused, so we're going to use them for the trees that are going to line the driveway. We're going to use them to water this. And the fourth one has already been plumbed. And there's a line that runs behind all of these containers right here. We don't have them hooked up on drip yet, and we'll have that drip line running underneath the pots up through the drain hole so you don't see the tubing. But that's what that fourth zone is going to be used for. And then we'll hook this up at that time. Our last area is the Versailles Garden. going to be it for today's video not the project entirely because there are some zones like the lavender in front of the vegetable garden and the hydrangea that we need to figure out how we can split so that everybody's receiving everybody every plant is receiving the water that it wants um, at the frequency that it wants but it is peace of mind to know that we went through the whole property and fixed all of the leaks um, there are no repairs that currently need to be made at the moment so we can run everything and get everything hydrated because we haven't had consistent rain and it's been fairly windy and things are starting to need more consistent water. So Aaron's actually gonna run around um, in the gator um, right now and he's gonna program everything so we can get everything watered. It's gonna feel so good to not look out and like think that my plants are parched and they need a drink. So anyway, I know that these nodes are not for every garden situation, but they've worked really well. I mean, even the ones that were less intuitive, they helped us solve a problem that we had in the garden. And now that we can run them from our phone, 
that's even better. Um, if we can make those improvements at the scale that we're doing things on in our garden, we have to have automation and we have to have it as easy as possible. Otherwise, like it just would never work and like the new property wouldn't have been an option if everything in here needed a ton of attention all the time. Um, so if you find yourself needing to put in water or you know do several different zones and you're far away from your main water source and you wanna get everything underground and automated, maybe this is something that might interest you. So anyway, we just thought we would bring you along for the whole process today because it's something that we needed to get done and it's just part of gardening. So for us anyway, for all of us, we all have to figure out how to get water to our plants mostly. So anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out and watching this video today and we will see you in the next one. Bye.